Well, if you found this video, it's probably because you're looking for a little bit of help with simultaneous equations at GCSE. We're going to look at two types of simultaneous equation today. We're going to look at your normal bog standard linear simultaneous equations. And then in the second half of the video, we're going to be looking at simultaneous equations with one of them being a quadratic. And I've time stamped in the description the part where that starts if you're okay with the, the linear uh, simultaneous equations. So let's begin. Okay, but the answer's seven, innit? What are you on about? You've not even seen the question yet. I know, but I don't need to. It's always seven, innit? I'm right, aren't I? It's seven. Shut up. Now, a lot of people look at simultaneous equations and see them as being a lot more difficult than they are. But the truth is, if you can solve this problem that's on the screen right now, you will have no issue with simultaneous equations. This simple problem here, four cans of pop equals 40 pound. Now, everybody watching will know that if four cans of pop equals 40 pound, then one can of pop must equal 10 pound. And if you're watching from America, uh, pop just means fizzy drink. Uh, anyway, how have you done that calculation? Well, you've taken the 40 pound and you've divided it by the four cans of pop and you've got 10 pound. Now that's really easy. And if you can do that, you honestly can do simultaneous equations. Yeah, honestly, if you can do that, you really can do simultaneous equations and you'll find out that the answer is seven. Will you shut up? Anyway, um, there's just one little step you've got to do before you get to that bit that we've just done that's really easy. Yeah, Kat, you're right. There's just one little step we've got to put in first. Now, when you see a simultaneous equation, it will look a little bit like this. Rather than just being four cans of pop equals 80 pound or whatever, we're going to have two items. We're going to have crisps and we're going to have pop in this example. Or it could be X and Y. Um, and if we just give them one statement like that, it is impossible to figure out exactly what the crisps must cost and what the pop must cost. That is impossible. But a simultaneous equation will always give us two of these statements and with those two statements we can solve the problem yeah and you'll find that the answer's seven you're going back to the vet oh um okay how do we actually solve these then go on well we solve the problem by taking these two statements and turning it into something easy like this that we saw before we're going to eliminate either the crisps or the pop to get something very very simple like this let me show you how it's done in this example, I've got eight packets of crisps and four cans of pop in the top row. And I've got four packets of crisps and one can of pop in the bottom row. Now, what I want to do is make sure um, that I have either the same number of crisps in both equations or the same number of cans of pop in both equations. And I can achieve that by multiplying, in this case, the bottom equation by two. And what do I mean when I say multiply it by two? Well, I'll walk you through it. Four packets of crisps times two is gonna give me eight packets of crisps. Now that's what I was trying to achieve. I was trying to get either the crisps or the pop the same. Um, if I times my one can of pop by two, that gives me two cans of pop. And if I times my 34 pound by two, that gives me 68 pound. So now what I've managed to do is make sure that my crisps on the left are exactly the same number. All right, it doesn't matter that the cans of pop aren't. I've achieved my goal by making at least one of them the same by multiplying one of the equations. Ta-da! Brilliant, yeah. Um, it's actually it's actually worth also saying that sometimes you have to multiply both equations. So maybe if the top one has two cans of pop and the bottom one has three cans of pop, then you might have to times the top one by three to get six and the bottom one by two to get six. So yeah, just bear that in mind. Anyway, the answer will be seven no matter what. So how do I move on from there? Well, I said originally that the goal is to really simplify this to the, the very easy type of question you got at the start of the video. To do that, I can now subtract this bottom equation from the top equation. So let me show you what I mean by that. Eight packets of crisps minus eight packets of crisps gives me no packets of crisps. Four cans of pop minus two cans of pop gives me two cans of pop. And on the uh, other side of the equal sign with the money, 80 pound minus 68 pound gives me 12 pound. So by doing those two simple steps, by multiplying one of the equations and then subtracting it from uh, the first equation, I've now simplified this into that very easy equation we had at the beginning of the, the video. Now I know two cans of pop equals 12 pound. And straight away, I know that you have figured this out already. One can of pop must therefore equal six pound. What? Not seven pound? No, 12 divided by two, six pound. Uh, you must have done it wrong. 
Yeah, so now I know what one can of pop equals. It equals six pound, which is pretty expensive. Um, so how can I use that now to figure out what a packet of crisp costs? Well, I'm gonna take that six pound and I'm gonna substitute it into any one of these equations. So let's take this equation here. Four packets of crisps plus one can of pop equals 34 pound. I can change that now because I know what a can of pop costs and I can turn it into this. Four packets of crisp plus six pound equals 34 pound. So how am I now gonna uh, take that further to find out what one packet of crisp costs? Well, I'm gonna take that six pound and I'm gonna put it on the other side of the equal sign. So I'm gonna have 34 pound minus six pound, which tells me that four packets of crisp equals 28 pound. And now straight away, everybody watching the video will be thinking 28 divided by four, therefore a packet of crisps must equal seven pounds. Ha ha, told you, seven. The answer's always seven, I win. Oh, for God's sake, will you shut up? <laughs> bye bye, Baldy. So I'm now going to give you the opportunity to do one of these for yourself, but this time, instead of talking about cans of pop and crisps, we're just going to go to the standard X and Y that you'll see in your textbook. So 9X plus 2Y equals 100, 4X plus Y equals 45. Wind back the video, follow the steps I took, and I'll catch you in about 20 seconds to see if you got the right answers for X and Y. Yeah, I'm going to give you 20 seconds to see if you can uh, pause this video and figure some of this out. While you're doing it, I'm going to entertain you with a bit of beatboxing. You ready? <coughs> oh, that's cool. So, if I were you, the first thing I would have been doing is looking to see if I could make either my X is the same or my Y is the same. And I can make the Y is the same if I take this equation here and I times it by 2. And that gives me this. 8x plus 2y equals 90. Every single thing in that equation has been times by 2. Now I'm going to take the simple second step, which is subtracting the bottom equation from the top equation. So 9x minus 8x gives me x. 2y minus 2y gives me no y. And 100 minus 90 gives me 10, leaving me with this, x equals 10. But now I know x equals 10, I can figure out what i equals by take... Uh, what, what, yeah, you might well stutter, you idiot. What he means is, why? Not I, why? What a moron. Don't know what you're listening to him for. Right, I'll try that again. Now I know that x equals 10, I can figure out what y equals um, by taking that uh, 10 for x and substituting it into one of the linear equations. And this is the one I'm going to choose. 9x plus 2y equals 100. Um, so if I take my x, which equals 10, I can read that as 90 plus 2y equals 100. So how do I find out what y equals? Well, I'm going to take my number and put it on the other side of the equal sign. So all my numbers are on the, uh, the right-hand side, which gives me 2y equals 100 minus 90. Therefore, 2y equals 10. So y di uh, 10 divided by 2 gives me y. So y equals 5. Yeah, well done. Right, now sometimes they'll try and catch you out by being a little bit crafty and leaving in here negative numbers. Take a look at the equation on the board at the minute. This one on the surface of it looks far easier than the ones we've done already because the x's are already the same. We're not having to multiply one of the uh, equations to, to make the x's the same. They're already both 4x. So you might think, well, I'm just going to subtract the bottom one from the top one, which you will do. But notice that the 2y on the bottom is a minus 2y. So 3y minus minus 2y doesn't give us 1y. It's not 3 minus 2. What do we get when we minus a minus number? We have to add them together. So this would be 3y minus minus 2y, or the same as 3y plus 2y. So we're going to be left with 5y once we cancel out the x's. And obviously the 70 minus the 50 gives us 20. So we're going to have 5y equals 20, uh, and therefore 20 divided by 5 y would equal 4. Yeah, so basically a minus, minus, a minus equals a plus. I could have said that in 10 seconds. He does go on, doesn't he? Anyway, let's get on to the main event, the thing you're all here for and dead excited to see. Please let me introduce you to a simultaneous equation with one linear and one quadratic. Welcome. So instantly by looking at this equation, it seems far, far more difficult. The top equation has that squared value in it. It's a quadratic equation. Well, that bottom equation is just our normal linear equation. Using the method that we've used for the more simple um, simultaneous equations isn't going to work. I can't multiply that bottom equation to fit the top equation. 
it's not going to happen. I've got to use a different technique. And the technique I use is making sure to start with that both expressions have been arranged so they are equal to y. In this example, they are already arranged so that they are equal to y, but you might have to do that yourself. Now, once I know that they are equal to y, then I can say this. I can say, for example, that 8x squared minus 5x plus 7, which is a top expression, equals 2x plus 1. They are going to be the same number. They are both y. And that tells me that if I take that 2x plus 1 that is on the right-hand side and I move it across to the other side of the equal sign, right? In other words, if I subtract it from that first equation like this, my answer has to be 0 because 2x plus 1 equals x squared minus 5x plus 7. So therefore, if I subtract 2x uh, minus 1 from that, I'm going to get 0. 0? You mean not 7? I need now, from this point, I have to simplify the equation. And you can see how I've done that on this slide here. My 5x minus, sorry, my minus 5x minus 2x gives me minus 7x. My plus 7 minus 1 gives me plus 6. So now I've simplified that to x squared minus 7x plus 6 equals 0. Great. So how do I use that to figure out x and ensure that it's 7? So how am I going to go about now finding x? How am I going to go about solving this type of equation? Well, remember, if we solve this type of equation, what we're going to do is take that equation um, and we're going to place it into two sets of brackets. These brackets, if I times them together, are going to give me that expression. So how I do it is I look at that first expression, which is, in this case, x squared, and I think of two things that would multiply together to give me x squared. And the only two things that will multiply together to give me x squared are x and x. Now, had that first e expression been 2x squared, then I might have a 2x and an x. Had it been 9x squared, I might have had a 3x and a 3x. Okay, so it's not always just going to be x, but if, it, if the expression just gives us x squared on its own, then it will just simply be an x. I then take my attention to this number here. And I'm looking now to fill the other places in the brackets for two numbers that will add together to give me, in this case, minus 7. Now, obviously, there's lots of different numbers. I could have minus 4 plus minus 3. I could have um, minus 9 plus 2. I could have lots of different numbers that will add together to give me minus 7. So how do I know which of those numbers, which of those possible numbers it's going to be? Well, I take my Q from this number here. And I have to think of numbers that multiply together to give me 6. So I could have plus 6 and plus 1. They will times together to give me plus 6. I could have minus 6 and minus 1. They will times together to give me plus 6. But which set of numbers will do both? Which set of numbers will add together to give me minus 7, but also times together to give me plus 6? And this is where the trial and error comes in. You're going to have to try a few different combinations. The combinations that work here are minus 1 and minus 6. So minus 1 times minus 6 gives me plus 6. But if I add them together, minus 1 plus minus 6 gives me minus 7. Now, one thing I want you to avoid in this position is thinking that you've solved the equation here. I don't want you thinking that x must equal minus 1 or that x must equal minus 6. Okay. In fact, we are going to get two answers. x is going to be derived from the first bracket and a different number for x is going to be derived from the second bracket. But it's not going to be minus 1 and minus 6. What we have to remember is in these questions, each bracket is going to be equal to 0. So if x minus 1 equals 0, then what must x be? Okay, It's a number that I have to subtract 1 from to get to 0. So x is actually going to be plus 1. And if I look in that bracket on the right, x minus 6, if that equals 0, then x must be 6. A real simple way to do it is just to change the sign. If x equal, uh, if, if you, in one bracket it's x minus 1, then x is plus 1. If in another bracket it's x minus 6, then x is plus 6. Just change the sign, and they'll give you two values for x. So we're always going to get two uh, possible answers. Okay, so we get two values for x, and neither one of them was 7, so you've obviously got it wrong. Again, you idiot. How do we use those two values we've got to find out what y is? Or is y 7?
So now that I've got my two values of x, how do I go on to then figure out what y is? Well, I'm going to take those values of x and I'm going to substitute them into the linear equation here. So y equals 2x plus 1, but remember we've got two values for x, which means we're going to get two values for y. The first value for x is 1, which will give us y equals 2 times 1, or y equals 2 plus 1. And the second value for x was 6, which will give us y equals 2 times 6 plus 1, or y equals 12 plus 1. And if we look at both of those, um, we find that our two possible values for y are 3 or 13. So we would say that when x equals 1, y equals 3. And we would say that when x equals 6, y equals 13. Now the key to these type of questions is that you just get practice. You know, the more you practice them, the more confident you're going to become with them, the more you're going to be aware of the sneaky little traps they try and lay for you, um, such as including negative numbers. Um, what I've done in the description is I've linked a couple of sites where you can find plenty of practice with the answers on here. So check those sites out, review the video to see the method I've gone through, and good luck with everything. Yeah, bye. Um, do you want to hear some more beatboxing before I go? Do Boop, 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 boop,